they had cleared a space there, very fertile fields and fertilized it and so forth, and very productive. Suddenly the settlers began to move in, and he was land that was already cultivated, or the trees were cut and so forth. Gradually, Sokhanov has been taken by, by the whites. It was a characteristic approach that they would simply ask the Indians, uh, do you mind if we plant a couple of uh, rows of corn here? The Indians were, you know, communist or communal Yes, They say, not at all. Go right ahead. And the next thing you know, they'd put up a fence. And the next thing you know, they'd start moving and encroaching. When the Indians protested, and there were a couple of fist fights, no murders, but fist fights and things and protests, then you simply call the government, call the state of Illinois, basically, and uh, you have governors like John Reynolds, who was called the old ranger, realizing that his political constituents had demanded action and getting the United States to pack them off across the river. Ostensibly, you give them land, but it's never the same. It's not your homeland. There's a real division within the Sac and Fox in that by 1830, 1831, uh, within a year or two of, of the Black Hawk War, most of the Sac and Fox have just recognized the writing on the wall. They know that they're not going to be able to stay on their traditional homeland. They have moved over into Iowa, and they are following uh, the main body of chiefs who have all agreed that this is the necessary step. And, and the real leader of this group from the federal government's perspective is a man named Keiko. The Black Hawk War was really triggered when Black Hawk and his followers, this mixed band of Sac and Fox, uh, Kickapoos, Potawatomis, and Winnebagos, came into Illinois from the west, back across the Mississippi River. He had agreed the previous summer, in the summer of 1831, to stay west of the river and to stay under the control of Keokuk and the other civil leaders of his tribe. He had really gone back on his promise, his pledge that he had made. Uh, they had decided that this was intolerable, that uh, he couldn't stand being under the control of these people he hated and he viewed as having sold out his tribe. There was also uh, a rumor circulating that the British would provide supplies and assistance. That if something happened and Black Hawk found himself uh, in a conflict with uh, the federal government, that British support would be forthcoming. Now this was a lie, and it was very clearly a lie. And he would learn within the next few months that it was a lie. It was a lie that was told to Black Hawk by some of the very young chiefs in this band that, that he was really seen as the head of. And they told him this to, to stir him up, to get him to go back east. Uh, to get him to go live with the Winnebago prophet. 